DJ Ban Ban Bandana. Hey, yo, what's good? What's going on, Bandana fam? It's DJ Bandana Black, Mr. Well Connected, even more respected. First off, welcome you all to episode number five of the Blackout Podcast with yours truly, DJ Bandana Black, Mr. Well Connected, even more respected, Mr. Hashtag I Am Buffalo. And before you can say anything, before you can say anything, I'm going to let you know now. Yes, I know. We haven't uploaded in a while. We haven't uploaded in a couple weeks. Actually, it's probably been about a uh, few months but anyways we back on track the blackout podcast is back each and every week saturday nights at 10 p.m on whatever di- device you're on whether you're on apple music where you're on android or whether you're checking out on the youtube channel um before we start episode number five shouts out to our sponsors uh this week uh podcast is brought to you in part by uh hugo hurt design you can check them out at hhdondeck.com also hip hop weekly magazine you can check them out at hiphopweekly.com and last but not least my family over there at armadale vodka and you can always check them out at vodka armadale.com hashtag top shelf life they can't stand the facts no. a lot of the insane they can't stand this rap i'm so oh. buffalo like i'm bandana black but from the 716 we determine it we discipline dj ban ban bandana listen we got a lot to talk about today we got a lot of a lot to talk about today on today's uh episode um for those of you who follow me on social media because i know a lot of you guys are not in buffalo new york my hometown um long story short you got to go to the youtube channel to get the full story but um basically i got fired off of uh, radio after doing six 16 years for a company um they told me that it was budget cuts and they couldn't afford to keep me on and a bunch of other stuff that wasn't true because two days later they were giving away money for free but as i always say life is what you make it so make it and honestly when you're a true hustler like when you're a true hustler, like a real hustler it doesn't matter who your plug is you find a way to make things happen so one, one spot might get shut down you move it down the street and that's exactly what happened we moved it over here on the podcast and um I got some other announcements, too, we're going to talk about later on in the show. A um, couple things I want to talk about. Though. How are you guys doing? I want to know how you guys are doing. Make sure you hit me up on Twitter. Uh, respond back. If you want to respond back to me, hit me up on Twitter at DJ Bandana Black. If you hear anything in the podcast and you want to respond back. Um, actually, I'm on all social media at DJ Bandana Black. And real quick, before I forget, if you want to support the podcast, a lot of people uh, show support when um, they found the news that I got fired um, off of radio and they said they wanted to support me in any way possible. So if you want to support me, just support the things that I'm doing right now, um, especially this podcast. Like I said, we're, we're, re- we're revamping the podcast, the Blackout Podcast. I got some dope things that's going on, uh, interviews, exclusive music. We're going to have some giveaways. Um, next week episode, I got a special guest, a super special guest. Um, those of you that's from Buffalo, New York, um, you're going to be surprised. I- I'm going to just put it like that. You're going to be surprised, um, but that- that'll be next week's episode. They're going to call in or they might just be live with me um, when we record the podcast. Um, but like I said, if you want to support the podcast, um, you can always support Support it uh, via PayPal. Uh, my email address is just bandinablack at gmail.com. Or if you want to support through Cash App, Cash App, money sign, I am Buffalo. Just money sign, I am Buffalo. I'm not asking for donations, but for those of you who said that you wanted to help out and wanted to... Um, wanted to support what I was doing, that's the best way you could do it. Um, it would allow me to uh, do what I need to do or do what I want to do on the different platforms that I'm doing. I'm still going to be supporting um, independent artists, still putting you guys on to a lot of exclusive music, things like that. Basically, nothing changed. It's just the spot. The spot got raided. We had to move down the street, but we here. Um, so first thing I want to talk about is uh, Snitch Nine. So Snitch Nine, <coughs> my bad, Six Nine. Six Nine is back home. And one of the conditions, I think he's going back to jail, though, because one of the conditions of 6 9 uh, getting out of jail was that they said that he couldn't troll any longer. He's like, yo, you can't be on the Internet trolling and stuff like that. And what does he do? He makes his profile picture. It's like a cartoon profile picture. If you go to 6 9 Instagram right now, there's a cartoon pro, uh, cartoon uh, picture of 6 9 sitting in a mousetrap eating cheese. Like, I, I don't I don't get this guy. Like, you did all this stuff to be tough. You look you got looked at this tough, got locked up, snitched on everybody, and then you get out and then you snitch and you you, you taking pictures in a mousetrap, uh, eating cheese. And then he had a caption saying, everybody calling me a rat or calling me a snitch. What did I do? Did I miss something? Like, this dude. And honestly, the reason why I want to talk about 6 9 because I know a lot of people, and listen to me clear, a lot of people said 6 9 was over. They said it's over for 6 9 He snitched. He can never come back. Honestly, now hear me out. Like, let me say this first. I do not support 6 9 What he did goes against everything that I stand for. I would not support him. I would not play his music. I would not do any of that. But he's going to have a very successful career if he can stay alive. And the reason why I say that is if you look at it, people who stand on the same morals and standards that I stand on as far as um, 
if you snitch or if you, I mean, you portrayed to be a gangster, you got to take what comes with that. Um, that's just something that's not acceptable. But the people who actually supported 6 9 music, the people that actually like buy his music and stream it and stuff like that too, is not necessarily the majority of the people that's from the hood that have the same feelings that I may have or a lot of you guys that's listening to this may have. Um, it's a bunch of like little kids from like Wichita, Arkansas. I don't know if Wichita, Arkansas is the place, but just imagine like a small city in like one of those like, random places um those are the people that support them it's, it's kids that's from the suburbs who have no identity with the hood or hood politics at all that support six nine so really all he got to do is come out and say yo listen um they turned against me i had to do what i had to do to get home i'm still back here stupid and they're still gonna uh they're still gonna rock with them i mean they, they still gonna rock with six nine i think it's unfortunate because a lot of people who actually lived that life and actually um up upheld those standards and those morals and those codes um, their life and future and money is pretty much done. Um, a lot of those guys are still, actually all of those guys that he told on is still locked up. I think the only person that came home was, um, cool to be. I actually seen in the news that he was coming home. I'm not sure if he actually came home um, yet, but if he did come home, I hope he, I mean, just get low. Don't have any interactions with six, nine. Um, but I want to hear from you guys. How do you feel? Do you like a lot of you guys were saying that six, nine would be over. He would be done. It, honestly, just me knowing the industry, like I said, I've been I've been on radio for 16 years, but I've been in the industry um, for about 20 as far as the entertainment industry. Um, he doesn't he don't really have anything to worry about as far as music. He can still put out records. He can put out records from his house and just stream. He ain't got to do tours. Not like that. His, his buzz is already so big. All he got to do is keep up with these antics um, as far as what, what he's doing now. Like, hey, everybody calling me a rat, calling me a snitch. Did I miss something? All he honestly has to do is just keep continuing on with that. Um, I almost messed up and said I wish him the best. I definitely do not wish that guy the best. But um, moving along, the 2026 9, we're going to talk about the 2026 9, which is Young Chop. Now, not only did Young Chop say he don't blame uh, 6 9 he basically was saying that he he, he approved of what 6 9 did. Um, but I don't really want to talk too much about that part of it because I don't want to make this like a 6 9 podcast. But um, Young Chop, I think, is ruining his legacy. And let me explain why I think Young Chop is ruining his legacy. Because when that whole Chirac movement uh, took off, regardless of who started the drill movement, um, as far as on a worldwide scale, we all learned about it through Chief Keef, Little Reese, um, Little Dirt, that whole camp. And the backbone to all of that, a lot of times producers don't get credit, but the backbone to all of that was Young Chop. Um, if you listen to a lot of those hit songs, it was Young Chop on the beats. He was doing his thing. Um, I think the mistake that Young Chop did was he kind of kept his circle too small as far as only working with Chicago artists or really not networking and getting his music to like other genres and other artists and other platforms and stuff like that too because once that whole Chicago drill movement kind of died down, and I'm not saying it's over, but when is the last like hit record you heard of Chief Keef? I mean, I understand he's still putting out music, but he's not, as, I'm not saying this disrespectfully, but he's not putting out music on a scale of what he was putting out before. So that would mean that Young Chop Beats is not getting out on on a scale that it was before. And the reason why I think Young Chop is ruining his legacy because honestly, we all respected him for being the backbone of that that, that whole Chirac movement. What he should have did, in my opinion, was instead of dissing people like Meat Mill or French Montana, these are guys who publicly came out and said that they supported him. What he should have did was, because obviously all of this was because he was dropping a project, which people wasn't really going to support that much anyways, but it makes you not want to support it more when you see he's kind of looking like a clown right now. Um, he was better off just telling Meek Mill or telling French Montana, like, yo, listen, all I need you to do is I'm dropping this on the 15th. Just just put up the flyer for me. Because if you look at it, when he was dissing all these people and trolling all these people, they were saying like, yo, what's wrong with you? Like, yo, we good. Like, y'all rocks with you, homie. Like, I want you to be successful. So I think sometimes... You can't take the six nine approach. That doesn't work for everybody. And even the people that it does work for, look look how it turns out. Look 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 at six nine situation right now. He could never come out in public, go to a club, go to a party, no security, anything else like that. He's not gonna have the respect of the people that um that really rock with hip hop. I mean, the, the the core foundation of rap. They're not really gonna rock with him on that. So I think Young Chop is kind of ruining his legacy. I hate to kind of see this happen, but I understand what he's saying as far as being like um blackballed and. You, you can't make the type of moves that you want to make because the industry is holding you down. But that's an excuse. It's 2020. Like, you don't need a label. You don't need a label. You don't need a radio station. You don't need a, um, um what is it called, a, a promoter. You don't need a manager. You can do it all yourself. And Young Chop is talented enough with the beats and what he learned in the industry for the time that he was on the industry. He could have just did it himself. If he would have took that that approach, I honestly think he'd have been a little bit more um, successful with what he's what he's doing right now. But um, moving along, next topic I want to talk. Actually, you know, before we get into this next topic, what I want to ask you guys is um, for those of you that's in relationships, 
that's uh, quarantined right now. How are you guys doing? I'm, I'm checking on you guys. How are you guys doing? Hit me up, like I said, on Twitter at DJ Bandana Black if you want to respond to anything that I say on the podcast. But how are you guys doing? The reason why I say that and single you guys out because there's a big difference between being in love and living with somebody and being in love and living with somebody and being forced to be around that person 24 seven because you quarantine because the Corona is going around and everybody's locked down and you can't leave the house. I know that was a lot to say, but it's a lot that's going on. So I, I, I feel your struggle. I feel your struggle. A lot of times, I mean, when you live with somebody, it's different than having your own spot. But when you live with somebody and you can't leave, like you can't have your own time and can't have your own like a little area like that too, it could become kind of, kind of, I would say kind of higher. Like people start noticing things that they didn't notice before. Like my fiance the other day woke me up to tell me that I was snoring. Um, I was asleep. Yeah, of course. I snore every day. I was snoring before the Corona. I'm snoring after Corona. Hopefully I don't be snoring because of the Corona. Like I, I want to stay alive. Knock on wood pause but um yeah how are you guys doing let me know some stories of what's going on with you guys especially you guys just working from home um my fiance is working from home also too and by the way i was joking about that because she's working from home so she has to take calls and stuff and i'm in the background snoring because she got like a little office set up in our um in our bedroom because i have my other office set up in the dining room whatever so i know it's, it's it's a struggle it's hard because you you work from home still trying to provide for your family and stuff like that too but you kind of still want your own space to be able to do your own thing i just wanted to go to sleep honestly um but yeah, like the, the the next topic I want to talk about too. I think this is um with this Corona thing that's going on. I think this is actually a pivotal point in our history, and I think this is an opportunity for creators. Um, even some of you that's listening right now, who ever wanted to do like a YouTube or a podcast or do anything on your own, be on your own boss. I think this is the perfect time to do it because everybody's home. As long as it's something that you can do where people don't have to come to you, something that you can do online, whether it's music, showing people how to produce a beat, showing people how to do hair, showing people how to cook certain things, showing people how to make certain things. This is the perfect time to do it because everybody's home. Everybody's going to be on the internet. Um, luckily for me, I've been doing it for a while. Like I've always made sure that my, my digital, um, digital footprint was pretty, pr pretty good. And, um, my YouTube channel is doing pretty good too. Um, shouts out to the bandana fam. Anybody that's listening to this on YouTube, but that's from YouTube, but definitely appreciate you guys. Um, but yeah, uh, as far as online things, I know you guys been watching a lot of stuff for like little Boosie, um, Tory Lanes, um, French Montana. I think this is great. I've been seeing a lot of uh, producers versus producers doing battles, DJs versus DJs doing battles and stuff online. I think this is very entertaining and very good. Um, it's sad that the Corona and, um, quarantine, made us made this happen i mean it should have happened before producers djs different people rappers and all that too should have been doing things like this before but i understand people was busy got to do concerts and travel and stuff like that too um so you have to be home but i think that's definitely dope um the one thing i want to see and this is this is an odd matchup too um you guys probably not gonna want to see this matchup or not agree with me but i want to see dr dre versus kanye west I want to see Dr. Dre versus Kanye West in a producer battle on live. I actually would pay for that. Like if they had like a, a pay-per-view and it was like $20, $30, well, actually I just got fired too. So if it was like 10 or $15, I would definitely pay for that. I, I can afford the 20 or 30. Um, but yeah, I would definitely pay to see that. Uh, Kanye West, Dr. Dre, just on, just on, just, just for fun. I mean, I think that would be very entertaining because they're from two different eras, did two totally different type of music, but their impact in the, the lanes that they were, I think is about, I'm not going to say, it's hard to say even because Dr. Dre is looked at as a legend. Um, Kanye West, I think, he, he is a legend, but I don't think he's looked at in that same light as like a Dr. Dre. But when you really look at his catalog and not just the stuff that he's done, but the stuff that he's done from other people, I mean, that might be a that might be a close battle. Like, I don't know who I would bet on in that, that particular uh, battle. Like, honestly... If they did it online, like if they did it online, because a lot of people that's online are younger people, nine times out of 10, they're going to go with Kanye West. A lot of these people have no idea um, the work that Dr. Dre has done. I mean, they, knew, they probably know who Dr. Dre is because of the Beats by Dre's and all that, but they probably have no idea as far as the extent of the work that Dr. Dre has done. Um, so I would honestly like to see that. Uh, Dr. Dre versus Kanye West. Um, like I said before, we back. This is episode five of episode five of the Blackout Podcast. Uh, this will be going down each and every Saturday night at 10 p.m. I'm not sure if we're going to do. We might do the podcast twice a week, but for now, we're definitely going to do it um, 10 p.m. on Saturday nights. Um on whatever listening device that you're on. And if, like I said, if you want to support the channel, if you want to support what I'm doing, everybody who said they want to support, um, if you can't donate, then just share it. Make sure you stream it. Make sure you, you, you listen to each and every episode. And I got a couple of other announcements that I'm going to announce um, right after I finish saying what I'm going to say. Um, so like I said, you, could, you, can, you, you can definitely support what I'm doing. Um, the other announcements is 
um, like I said, I got fired from radio. I had a show called The Blackout. I had two shows, um, The Night Show, which was from 10 p.m. till midnight, and then I had The Blackout, which was my baby, from midnight till 2 a.m. As far as The Night Show, we're not really going to worry about that right now. Um, what's going to be in place of The Night Show is going to be this podcast. So Saturday nights, 10 p.m., make sure you tune in. We'll have this uh, Blackout podcast. Like I said, this is episode five. But then at midnight, we're going to have the blackout, but we're going to have the blackout live. So I'm going to do the live blackout each and every Saturday night at midnight. And that's going to be live on the YouTube channel. So if you listen to this right now, matter of fact, pause this right now, go to YouTube, search DJ Bandana Black and just hit subscribe. I'm going to give you a couple seconds. Just hit subscribe. Go to YouTube right now, search DJ Bandana Black and hit subscribe. Okay, you hit subscribe. So we good. So, yeah, that's what we're going to do that. We're going to go live each and every Saturday night. Like I said. When you're a true hustler, it doesn't matter where you at as long as you got good product. And I've, I've provided good product. I've I've given out good karma. Um, I've promoted a lot of people. I support a lot of people. And a lot of people want to support me, um, not just from my city. I mean, Buffalo showed me love in the last couple of days when they heard the news. Um, but all over, I got people out in London, England, Ireland, Africa, everywhere that tunes in, all throughout the USA, everywhere. I had somebody, I think it was like Spain or China or something. I don't know how they like wrote it in English. Maybe it was like a automatic uh, like spell check interpreter type of thing i'm not sure but anyways we got fans all over that's um th that's checking me out and wanting to support the channel um like i said uh going forward we will be doing uh, a couple surprise guests especially next week next week's episode we got a dope dope guest that's i can't wait for that episode um but we will still be promoting um independent artists local artists probably some major artists i do still have ties with a lot of different record labels a lot of artists too so we may have them uh call in or tune in on the either the blackout live or right here on the podcast but Make sure in your calendar, you set like a little reminder or something like that. Each and every Saturday night, 10 p.m., the Blackout Podcast. Each and every Saturday night at midnight, the Blackout Live with DJ Bandana Black. As always, I appreciate all of you guys. Um, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, um, once I, I, I said the news of me getting fired from radio after doing 16 years, the amount of support and the things that people were willing to do um, kind of surprised me because I honestly felt like, even though I wrote for the city and for a lot of artists and helped people get into certain positions or I'm not going to say I, I got them in certain positions, but I played my part as far as helping people get in certain positions. A lot of times that love was never shown back. But once I gave this news, a lot of people who I didn't even expect, who I didn't even know even really, really supported me, said, listen, whatever you want to do, like I, whatever you was making on radio, I pay you that every week. I'm like, no, it's not about the money. It's never been about the money. It's been about helping others and supporting artists and putting on for my city. And now I'm on a platform and I'm at a point in life where it's, it's still for my city. It's still for the platform. It's still for the people. But like I said, I got people all over. So I can support these artists, not only in my city, but across the world, right from where I'm right from where I'm doing it at. So I appreciate that guys. Um, shout out to everybody who has been supporting the uh, YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Um, shout out to everybody who's going to be supporting this podcast right here. The blackout podcast, as always, remember, Life is what you make it, so make it. It's DJ Bandana Black, Mr. Well-Connected, more respected. DJ Ban, Ban, Ban!